mean, when reading the, the screenplay when you first received it, I mean, you must have thought, I mean, this is it's quite a bleak tale, but there can be a, a, a beauty in telling bleak stories in cinema. I guess with Cleo at the, at the helm, you must have thought, okay, this is left in, in the right hands, and that must have given you a kind of confidence that it was going to be told in quite a, an affecting way, but not a, a sort of, um, I don't know, an unrelentingly kind of bleak way. Yeah, I mean, I, Cleo was the main draw. I mean, uh, I mean, I've read the piece, but I had... Or I was talking to her about something else, and she sort of came to me with that project. And um, yeah, I think in her hands, you know, she's going to find beauty in the darkest things, and she finds beauty in complexity, you know. And so I think that you go, okay, she's going to deal with this in the most sensitive manner, um, but she's also going to find she loves people, and she loves Yorkshire, and she loves, um, I don't know, it's just, so she's going to find all that beauty and complexity, and we're going to be okay. It's not going to be relentless it's going to have moments of hope and also the landscape's going to look beautiful and you know mm -hmm. I felt I, I, I didn't even have it was a no-brainer they're two incredibly sort of nuanced characters that must give you both so much to work with I mean a real both of these roles must be a real treat for, for an actor to get themselves their teeth sort of stuck into yeah I mean I, you know you see there's so much on the page and there's not much on the page like there's no words there's very few words so it's really about all the silences and that means you've got to dig deep into the psychology of these individuals and how they their, their physicality what they do because every nuance uh, is it's expressed through their body language so that's what was really fascinating about it actually I did a sheep shearing not a sheep shearing I did a sheep herding school and there was a dog uh, that I worked with who was a red-headed collie and she had like these sort of greeny bluey eyes and she was really scared of people or she kind of was hunched down every time they came in she couldn't make eye contact with people but when she was on the field she was like this boss like a boss she was focused in charge <laughs> she was like really sort of aggressive I thought that is Alice I based it my physicality on her entirely because it's like she she almost she could have gone she was sort of quite scary if she looked you in the eye she might have gone for you so I thought that's Mm. She, has, she can't c trust people, and she's got so much rage that she might eat you alive. <laughs> but <laughs> but she's just she knows that, so she, d she can't look. So it was, it was interesting. It's like finding other ways into character without words. Mm. Is that harder or easier, would you say, when, when you're performing, when you have got a character that doesn't, it's not so reliant on dialogue? To, is that, when, when you're kind of performing, would you say, is that more of a challenge to kind of display emotions, or is that, can that be easier without words I think it depends on what what you what you're trying to display or what you've decided that you're thinking at that moment um, for me it took a lot more you know dissecting it and trying to work out why I'm not speaking what's holding the person back what are you suppressing um, as opposed to necessarily what you're saying and doing to someone else because I think they've got they've got this it's, it's almost like you know to it's like a um, you know, a tin cup phone, like there's just one string holding them together and if that breaks, the communication's gone totally. But still, they're relying on one thing alone, which is just being in each other's presence, really. Um, and so it's, it, it is, I think it's more difficult when you're trying to work out, you know, what you're, why you're not talking. Because there's so many reasons why that could be. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a lot more complex, I think. And what was, I mean, when you are making a movie, I mean, there are some really um, affecting um, themes, sorry, in this movie. And obviously the characters have got so many, so much going on in their own minds. Is it mm -hmm. easy when uh, Clyde would shout, uh, cut, to just sort of return back to normality, sort of go to the pub, have a drink after work, uh, sort of talk about the day's work? Or was it was one of those sort of um, movies where it would really linger with you sort of throughout the whole shoot and made it sort of difficult to have that disconnect? I think I had, it was interesting, because of course it's, you need to get down the pub and have a few drinks and just let go. <laughs> But there was a sense for me, certainly, I, I think I was, I felt quite high anxiety about, about it. I think there was a pressure, not, it was like, you, know, you just feel there's so much and there's so much uh, physical, there's so many things, challenges each day. And it wasn't just about that, I think it's actually the psyche of the character that was sort of getting underneath. So I think a lot of us didn't, I didn't sleep very well throughout the whole film. I didn't have great sleep. Mm -hmm. And I think there was... It was just the sort of energy and adrenaline of that sort of filmmaking, um, but also probably the psychology of the character a bit. It did get in under my skin, but that, that's another reason why we need to go to the pub yeah. <laughs> every night. You know, but like quit, have a pint, a swift pint, or go and swim Lunchtime. it off. I'd go swimming quite a lot as well. Yeah, I'd go swimming Breakfast. just to go and get it, cleanse myself. But yeah, it was, 
It does get underneath sometimes, but then I can let go of it pretty easily by the end. How is it for both of you watching this back? Because I mean, it's one of those films, one, that it's one of the characters like this where you kind of give everything you have, you kind of bear your soul on screen. How is yeah. that to watch in, in an audience amongst the crowd? You know, I don't know if you saw it at Toronto or any of the festivals it's been at, but to see yourself on screen bearing your soul in the way that you both do in this movie. It's really hard. It's really hard to watch yourself all stop. Yeah. Right? I think the first 20 minutes, I don't say a thing and it's just on me and I'm like, come on, someone else come on screen. <laughs> And then when, yeah, when yeah. you came on, I was like, oh, thank God yeah, for is. that. I was like, you shared the load. I shared the load. I was like, oh, God. <laughs> um, so I, I think it's quite hard anyway to see that. But then you are surprised sometimes. Like, you know, you can watch, basically you're looking at yourself going, oh, what am I doing? But then there are moments when you really believe the scene or you are connected, actually. Mm. I found that, that I could believe it or I could feel and I wasn't moved by it. Um, and that's sort of amazing, really. It's, uh, but... It's quite hard generally to watch yourself, I think. I think when you know as well that, you know, I think we finished that shoot knowing that, we'd, like you say, we'd put everything into it. So I think it wouldn't, I'd have been quite shocked if it hadn't have come across okay. Yeah. I'd have maybe, <laughs> you know, <laughs> seek psychiatric help to find <laughs> out whether or not I am actually seeing what and believing what I'm, what I'm doing. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think I was proud just to watch it, just to, yeah. just to have been part of that. And obviously it's, it's a great collaboration with the people who've been on it. Yeah, I'm very proud of the movie and very proud of what it's saying and very proud of uh, everyone's work on it. I think it's quite a special movie. It's also now created my new favourite subgenre in cinema, which is Yorkshire farm set movies, because this is God's Own Country both came out in the space of sort of, well, quite well, obviously it's coming out quite soon after. I saw yeah. them quite close together. What do you think it is about a farm as a location? Do you think it's that kind of sense of isolation that works so well? Because there's something mm -hmm. about this and God's Own Country which really mm -hmm. heightens that sense of kind of loneliness within the characters, I felt. Definitely. I think there's a sort of sense of these, and certainly for my character and for Joe's, they're much more in tune in a way with the land than they are with humans. And um, there's something about how, like, how hard that loneliness is, but also there's a kind of connection elsewhere, an ethereal connection to the other, to nature, which I think is quite special. And that we're, we're sort of lacking at the moment, or we have been lacking in urban environments and generally, um, sort of concrete jungles. And I think there's something that filmmakers are trying to uh, explore is the relationship with nature and the isolation of that humans mm. at one with nature. It's the silence that you're left with as well at night. Mm. You know, it can either be very, mm. very comforting or hugely oppressive. And I suppose in that silence, that's when, if you've got secrets and past traumas, that's when the voices are going to start. Mm. So maybe it is a, an ideal setting for exploring that kind of... Psychology. Psychology yeah. and abuse, but certainly the abuse side of it. And I mean, Clara has proved to be one of the country's sort of most important voices in, in cinema at the moment. I mean, this is three incredible films sort of back to back. You must have been so thrilled to both have the opportunity to work with her on this. Yeah, completely. I mean, I saw both her films. The Arbor blew me away. I was like, that is it's so inventive yeah. and unusual and it really makes you think. And again, the way she approaches narrative on film is so different and it just, you as an audience are challenged, but in a really good way. It sort of plays on many different levels. Uh, and again, so to work with her and to explore that with her, I just, it was such a privilege. And it would be, uh, this is probably just the, the Game of Thrones fan speaking to me, but obviously Sean Bean and Joe Dempsey on this as well. Were, there, were you... Uh, uh, They're written into my contract. No, I mean, you, <laughs> I just have this like, nice like, fantasy of the three of you just sat in the pub just talking about, oh, I remember this one time I slayed that dragon. So, but did you, did, well, you, did, know, did you get the chance to reminisce and speak about well, the show? Well, I know Joe, yeah, well, a little bit. I mean, I know Joe... I, we were never in the same part of the story in that show, but we were in the same bar on a night time, so we'd always have a chat about it. But to be honest with you, I'd only met Sean very briefly. And then when he came onto the set, like, I've admired Ruth's work for a long time. I've watched what she's done, and it was definitely part of the draw. That it was like, you know, I'm going to have to spar off with this person. And that's, that was the challenge. And I'd got used to working with this actor that I knew and respected. And then when Sean Bean came on, I just turned into a little kid. <laughs> It was like I was staring up at Sharp and there he was and I've seen his face dozens of times but I really did turn into a little kid with him. It was funny because Sean, you know, I used to watch Sharp and love, he was my first sort of crush really and then suddenly he's in bed with me in different contexts entirely and he keeps saying, and he kept, I kept, I said to him, Sean, we must stop meeting like this. 
<laughs> we had to lighten the mood a bit, but it was like, it'd just be... Anyway, you've got to watch the film to know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, but yeah so it, it so was like... deleted scenes, probably. <laughs> um, brilliant. Thanks so much for your time today. No, Thank you. Cheers. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is that yeah. from The Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!